Hey everyone, I'm Jaime, and I'm going to start my first video off by teaching a bit about recursion. It's a topic I think that many people have trouble with whenever entering computer science, and I kind of want to give my own take on it. Um, I'm actually going to borrow a response to a core post asking about how can you explain what recursion is. And before I dive into the actual explanation, let's talk about what recursion is. So recursion is the idea of taking one large problem and combining subproblems of the same problem to figure out the large problem solution. That may seem a little weird, may not make sense right now because articulating recursion is fairly difficult. But let me just go ahead and go into the example. Let's say my friend and I, um, I'm gonna call my friend James. <laughs> so James and I are going to watch a movie. We're gonna watch Dark Knight, Batman, right? And it's the opening premiere of the movie. And as we go inside, we realize that we're going to have to wait a really long time if we want to get snacks and go inside. So I decide, hey, James, you get the snacks, and I'll get the seat. And I go inside, I get the seat, and it's right in the middle. So let me, let me draw this out. I have my movie theater here. It's a big, big, great movie theater with the rows and whatnot. And I got this smack dab center row of the entire theater and center seats right here for James and I. And as I'm waiting, he calls me and says, hey, where are you? And I see him he's standing right here. He's holding popcorn everywhere. He's ridiculous. And he's, I'm, over, I'm standing up right here, waving my hand, saying, hey, I'm right here. But he can't see me because everyone else around me is doing the exact same thing. And so he says, OK, well, what's your road number? If you know the road number, then I can just go straight up there and meet you right there. Well, I asked the person that left and right of me, and they have no idea what the road number is because who, who looks at the road number? I don't look at the road number. If you look at the road number, then you're awesome. But hey, most people, I don't imagine they look at the road number. And so I asked the person behind me, hey, do you know what the road number is? He says, no. And the person in front of me, does she know the road number? No, of course not. No one knows the road number. And you kind of just sit there thinking, okay, well, I need to figure out what my road number is. Otherwise, he's going to stand there and we're not going to be able to get the awesome snacks. You know you really want the awesome snacks. If you're in my shoes, you would definitely want those snacks. So you see the guy in the first row and you say, wow, if I was in the first row, I would clearly know I was in the first row. I mean, my view would suck, but I would know I was in the first row. And you come up with this great idea. So since a person in front of me doesn't know what his row is, I mean, if he knew what his row is, I could just add one to that and that would be the answer. I, like, I would have one plus his row. But if he doesn't know, then why doesn't he ask the guy in front of him? And if that guy doesn't know, then to continue on the chain. So here's a problem. You are at row x. You're going to ask the guy at row x minus 1. They don't know. Then ask the lady up at x minus 2, and so forth. And say that the guy at x minus 3 happens to know. Then clearly, like if this guy was at row 13, then x minus 2 has to be at 14, then 15, and then 16, and then you know you're at 16. And, and why is this going to work? Because if you go all the way down, where you end up being at x minus x, or sorry, x minus x plus one, that, that person's at the first row, right? Because just take that out, you have row one. Row one must know that they're at row one. So as long as someone along the way will know the answer, then everyone can know the answer. That's the beauty of recursion. You take the subproblem. As long as one person is guaranteed to always know, as one thing is always guaranteed to know the answer, then everyone else can figure the answer as long as you can combine a subproblem into the entire problem. And that's, the, that's basically what recursion is. It's one instance of recursion. And how can we apply this to other topics in computer science? So let's say that we wanted to write a function that could figure out the powers of two, right? So you pass in some integer x, and it gives you the answer, right, what's two to the x, right? So we're saying two to the x equals what? Well, let's think of the, of the initial definition. Like, what is guaranteed to always be true? Um, you can use anything of your knowledge, but for now I'm going to say, okay, well, any number, any number aside from zero that's raised to the power of zero is in fact one. So we can say, okay, if x happens to be zero, say we're saying two to the zero, well, that just equals one. So I'm going to return back to you one. All right. Well, what if what if we don't have it as zero, right? Like, let's say we're in this case where we're at x, right? So we're at two to the x. What, let's say we knew what two to the x minus one was, because here, whenever we were asking the person in front of us, the guy in front of us, what's your row number? We knew, hey, if they tell us the answer, like what row they're at, we're just one more than that. So what can we do with two to the x minus one to get to two to the x? 
Well, simply, if you multiply it by 2, we, we get 2 to the x. So all we have to do is say return 2 times the answer to the subproblem. And that will give us the power of 2. As, so if we give it like 3, then we say, OK, what's power of 2 with 3? Well, 2 to the 3 is not, this is not 1, so return 2 times power of 2. All right, so we call 2, and that calls 1, and the next call 0. And 0 says, hey, I know I'm 1. So the answer for yours is 1. 1 says, I'm 2 times that, so it's 2, 4, 8. And that's basically how recursion works. Um, I wanted to just give my own example uh, and help you all out a little bit. I plan on making more of these videos about random topics, things that I learn on my own free time, and things that I just want to teach others about because I love teaching computer science. So if you like the video and you want to see more, please subscribe and like it, and I hope to see you all often. Thanks.